Ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, welcome to another edition of Pod Tiki Video How To's. Today we're making how to one of my newest, oh, want to say favorite? It's one of those drinks where you, I don't know why I like it. This drink is like walking into a place that makes you uncomfortable and just pretending like you're supposed to be there. It's strange. And the strangeness of the drink is implicit in the name. Because hailing from the king himself, Mr. Trader Vic, today we're making Voodoo Grog. We're heading into the holiday season here at Pod Tiki, and maybe I should have saved this for October, but I came across it on, well actually I came across uh, another drink, the Kuanu Anu, when I was down in Trader Vic's Atlanta about a month ago. And I really wanted to make that drink, but I could not find a recipe anywhere. So, I'm, and I knew I wanted to make a Trader Vic drink to celebrate my first trip to a real Trader Vic's. I wanted to find one that really spoke out to me. And this, this, the ingredient list of this cocktail is like all of my favorite things. Um, and it looks like in those mixtures, though, it's almost I don't know. It's a very strange drink. I urge you to go uh, read the blog post or listen to the episode at podtiki.com or on Spotify, iHeart. The Voodoo Grog episode is available now, but for this little short blip, we're just going to make the drink and uh, yeah, we'll see what you guys think. So this is a blended drink, so we're in a blender cup. We are going to mix. First, one egg white. We're going to do this first in case something happens and it doesn't work out. <laughs> so, some people get grossed out by this. I think egg white adds a great texture to the drink, um, to any drink actually, especially try an egg white in like an aviator or, a, or a, a, a daiquiri to kind of froth it up a little bit and give it a smooth texture, especially on those really sour drinks. Anyway, we're gonna crack that open. Let that egg white kind of fall into the cup there while you're holding the yolk, and then just kind of back and forth, put the yolk from, from eggshell to eggshell until all that egg white falls off. There we go, bam, there it is. We're gonna put that into the drink, all right? Then we're gonna do three quarter ounce of lemon juice. I'm sorry, lime juice, we're gonna use lime juice. I don't know why I said lemon juice. Three quarter ounces of lemon juice and then three quarter ounce of grapefruit juice. Now, the recipe does call specifically for white grapefruit, but white grapefruit is not in season until November. So, not a very tiki month. So I'm using the grapefruit I got, right? To try to find the whitest one, I guess. And then we're gonna do three quarter ounce of pimento dram. That's a lot for pimento dram, but you'll see why when you taste the drink, it needs that much in there. There's a lot of competing flavors in here, but mm, so good. Hope I got three quarter ounce in here, so I don't gotta go run off and get that next bottle. Bam, three quarter ounce, put that in there. Then we're gonna do a quarter ounce of honey syrup. Now, you might be saying, if you know this drink, Tony, this is not how Trader Vic did it. I know, and I explain all about the honey syrup in the episode. There is a different way that he makes it from scratch. I tried it his way, and I tried it this way, and I noticed zero difference in flavor, zero difference in texture, and Don the Beachcomber was known to use this in place of regular honey. If you want to know what I'm talking about, I promise you I did not jeopardize the integrity of the drink. I just do it a little bit different to not make a mess. So listen to the episode for the full story. But we're going to do a quarter ounce of this. Quarter ounce of honey syrup. All right. And then we're going to do a half ounce of passion fruit syrup. Like. Man, there's so many, so many different things in here. It's like I'm making a zombie or something, right? Like a bunch of, so many ingredients. Now, I love passion fruit syrup. I love passion fruit in all kinds of drinks, whether it's the juice or the nectar or the syrup. It's just such a great ingredient for tropical drinks and tiki drinks especially, because it's got sort of that spiciness like pineapple does. Mmm, so good. We're gonna use a half ounce of this. Now, I know it's pretty easy to make your own passion fruit syrup, but it's not like I can just go down to the corner store and grab a passion fruit whenever I want. So I found that the risk versus the reward is worth it on just buying this stuff. 
Um, I use the Lever & Co. Tropical Passion Fruit Syrup, and it's really good. It's the best one I've had, so I recommend it. And then for the rums, we're gonna use a we're gonna use a gold Puerto Rican rum. Today I'm using Bacardi 10 year because I have it on hand and I'm trying to get rid of it. Because usually I would use the eight year. Bacardi eight year is probably my favorite like Puerto Rican style gold rum for sipping and mixing. I bought the 10 to see if it was any better. And personally, I think some things don't get better with age. I prefer the eight, but for a mixed cocktail like this, um, it's such a minute difference, it's not gonna make a difference. So I'm just using this to get rid of it, to be honest with you. It's a, uh, I think we're gonna do an ounce of that. And if you're saying, well, that's no way to make a cocktail, you should use your favorite ingredients or the best ingredients. Well, think about what most people are going out and using a gold Puerto Rican rum. They're probably just getting Bacardi regular or Cruzan or something like that. So anything is an upgrade for what most people will probably have on hand. And that's still a really good rum. Don't get me wrong. I just happen to like the eight year a little bit better. Now we're gonna use a gold rum agricole vu, which um, at Clement Visop is probably the go-to for most people. It's the most highly available. And even that is kind of sort of sometimes hard to find. I always have some on hand because I love it for Mai Tais. I love it for Martinique cocktails. Uh, and now I love it for Voodoo Grox. So try that ounce of the Clement Vu, right? Then we're going to do a cup of crushed ice, which, oh my gosh, look, I remembered the ice this time. I don't gotta stop and do an awkward pause in the middle of my video. Instead, I'm just gonna go on an awkward rant instead. How about that? We're gonna do about a cup of this, a cup of crushed ice. I'm telling you, if you can't forward or can't get your hands on a fancy, you know, um, home kitchen equipment like ice crusher thing or pebble ice maker or something like that. This is probably the best thing that ever happened to my tiki life, which is the Louis bag with a mallet. It makes awesome crushed ice. Now, making sure you get a cup, no less, no more, is imperative to this drink. It's one of those drinks where the balances of the ingredients and the ice and the mix and the, the egg white and everything it, it can throw it off if you put too much ice in, if it gets diluted too much, if you put not enough ice in, you won't you won't get the froth that you're looking for. So that egg white is going to really froth this drink up. Now we're going to turn on our handy dandy little mixer here. We're going to go a full 20 seconds on this because you really want to like frap that up and mix that that egg white up. You really want to froth it up. You don't want to take the have run the risk of having little egg white chunks in there or anything like that. You just you want to just Make sure it's really, really mixed up. So maybe I'll edit out the 20 seconds, or maybe I'll just let this mother have a go for 20 seconds. <laughs> creamy kind of color going on here. Now you might be saying, what is this? What kind of drink do we drink this out of? What kind of mug? Well, Trader Vic loved using his own mugs. This is a Voodoo Grog tumbler from Trader Vic's. This is the modern version, which is a solid black. If you get the classic versions, they come in either a translucent green or translucent blue. Those are gonna be pretty pricey, especially if you want an OG. Now, you'll notice on the top of this, once you pour it in, you get a little bit of foam from that egg white rising up. Um, it's not gonna come all the way to the top, but put that in there. All right, we're gonna dust this with a little bit of nutmeg. Might even put, top it off with a little bit more crushed ice, just to make it so, that, so it gets to the top of the mug. I have a pet peeve about when the drink does not come to the top of the glass. That might just be me. Look, that's, that's, it's a me thing. It's, look, it's me, not you, okay? Now, put a little bit more nutmeg for the dusting. This is supposed to get a garnish of a pineapple spear. Pineapple spear is super easy to make. 
chop the top and the bottom off a pineapple, you cut that mother like french fries, and you slid it in here. It's awesome, and it's great to eat afterwards. Um, I don't usually go all out on garnishes, but I usually do put the pineapple spear in this drink. Um, only problem is, I forgot to go grab a pineapple before I made this episode. So, to make up for that, we're going to do some mint. Make sure you slap it. Express them oils. You really want them oils to come out. I love when the mint is like a long piece like this because you can really stick it in there so it stays, right? We're gonna do a puffer fish mug from Surfside Six, or puffer fish straw from Surfside Six. Throw that in there. We'll do a little scored lemon to give it that yellow that it should have had that I messed up and forgot. Right? Put it on there with a one of my uh, was that beach bone berry picks, and then I'll throw a you know shameless plug. I'll throw a patiki umbrella in there, you know, because who knows you might need a little might need a little shade while you're drinking that voodoo grog. And there you have it, folks. There's the voodoo grog. Let's take a sip. <laughs> to edit that out. The drink is delicious. I just sipped it down my throat. Get a little too excited. It's my first drink of the day, guys. Ooh. You know what? I'm sure you guys remember your first drink. Mm. Now, surprisingly, for so many sours and sweets, it's super balanced because, again, that pimento dram kind of creams everything out, especially with the with, and the egg white. It takes the sour and the sweet, they kind of blend together, and then that pimento's got the spice and the creaminess, that and the egg white. Pimento and egg white go great together because they got a creamy texture already. The only thing I would say about this drink is I don't understand the rum selection that Trader Vic used. Um, it seems like if you're going to if you're looking for the rums to take a back seat like they do here, I don't really taste the Agricole. Um, another reason why I didn't mind using a gold Puerto Rican rum that I'm just trying to get rid of is because you don't really taste the rums in here. So you're saying, well, what if I jump up to a Jamaican rum or something funky? I tried it with a dark Jamaican like Myers. Still didn't really pop. I mean, the pimento, passion fruit, and then your sours and sweets and the honey, like, this, this drink is not really a drink where it's going to be very rum forward. The rums are kind of hidden behind those other flavors, which are great. It's a delicious drink. It's just not, it doesn't highlight the rum the way that like a Mai Tai or something might. So I suggest uh, playing with it. You know, if you got rums in your house that maybe you're trying to get rid of, uh, it doesn't really, you know, play around with it. See what you like. See if you can mix and match stuff. The flavors in this drink come more from the accoutrement than they do from the rums. Uh, which is not something usually happens in tiki. In tiki, usually the rums are meant to be rum forward. Still a very delicious drink. True, um, a true example of Trader Vic's culinary approach to making drinks. Um, it's really, I don't know. You guys want to read more about it or listen to more about it? Check out the episode of Pod Tiki. I'm on, I'm at a loss for words because it's it's one of those drinks where it's like oh, why this is delicious, but but why why do I like it so much? It, I mean, it's got a bunch of ingredients I like in it, sure, but the 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 uh, uh, amounts are all off. It, it it doesn't hit real rummy. It's not real sweet. It's um it's kind of just like a nice flat creamy multi-level um the, the texture and the, the flavors kind of change in your mouth a little bit while you're drinking it it's and while the drink goes down so it's really fun i would try it make it for some guests make it amongst yourselves talk about it let me know what you think about it because i'm interested too it sits right in the middle for me and i'd love to hear y'all's opinion on it so 
That being said, thank you so much for watching. This is how to make the voodoo grog. If you want to know the full episode, check it out on Pod Tiki at Spotify, iHeart, all the stuff I just said. If you want to hit me up and chat with me and let me know what you thought about the voodoo grog, you can go over to Instagram at pod underscore tiki or rum underscore poet. Um, also on Instagram in the bio section are all the links for all the social media. Head on over to our YouTube channel as well and subscribe. We are over halfway to getting the number that I was looking to get so we can start going live. And um, as soon as we hit that number and they allow me to go live, I would love to get on there and chat with some of you guys live. Until then, keep me tiki and be safe and happy summer as it winds down. And I will see you guys upon the autumn, upon the autumn winds. There's a lot of editing that's got to be done for this video. I'm probably not going to do any of it. I'm just going to finish this voodoo problem and forget about it.